right, everybody. In this video, what we're going to be doing is checking out a, I think a 1999 or 2000 Honda CRV. The issue is that the lights stay on all the time, which I will show you guys that. But right now, it looks like if they're off. Okay. So right now, the vehicle, no, not the vehicle, I should say, but the key is off. The switch for the lights are off. I'll put this guy back in. I was going to start doing this just to get it done, but then I thought, you want to what? It might be actually a decent video. So, um, okay. So, right off the bat, I can tell that this light is extremely, extremely dim. Okay. This light is extremely, extremely bright. Apparently, it's the right hand light. All right. So, that is dim and that is bright. Okay. So, I believe that there's a short going on somewhere in the system. Where exactly? I have no idea. But in order for the headlights to work and get power um, and click when everything is off, that means that the ground control for this for the relays are actually being uh, shorted together. Or that means that the ground relays, the ground control for the relays is being activated even with the vehicle off, which is not good. All right. So I'm pretty sure if I come onto one of these wires, which is going to be a control, uh, which I'm going to check we are going to be able to see exactly which one is doing what. All right. But we should not have a ground at all times. I do not believe so. All right. So what I'm going to do real quick is take and look at a wiring diagram and I'll bring you guys back. All right, everybody. So we're going to go over this wiring diagram really quickly. I'm going to give you my thought process. Um, Whenever I'm dealing with a vehicle, I always end up focusing on what the symptom or complaint is from the client. So the symptom and complaint from the client is on this one is that the headlights were all always on even when the vehicle was off and the switch was off. Um, the relay in this video was already out there from the client. Uh, I wasn't going to take and make a video, but I decided to make the video, which was the right call on my for me anyway. Uh, I thought it was a pretty interesting uh, situation. So... Um, so what we have to focus on on this one is the symptom from the client. All right. So we have to focus on our headlights. All right. Why? Because our headlights are staying on at all times. So if our headlights are staying on at all times, um, something is happening to keep them on at all times. So we have to go through and figure out how the headlights are controlled. So if we come up to the relays real quick, we see that we have constant power coming in at all times all right so with constant power coming in on uh two of the four pins that is telling me that this is going to end up being a ground controlled uh, system why because if i have two powers that means that it's going to be a power coming out on this side when my relay closes okay and a relay coming uh power coming on this one when my relay closes which then goes through this 15 amp and this 15 amp and then comes down and splices off to uh your headlights all right so and actually, it might even be on this one. Uh, where's this one? Let's go check. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, okay. So so it's going to come out on this uh, side. And then this one comes out on... Yeah, this one right here. All right. So, yeah. Okay. And so, right off the bat, with the headlights coming on, we know that, um, that the headlight system is working. So, but why is it turning on? If we have power 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 the only thing that could turn this on is a constant ground all right so since we know that this is going to end up being a ground controlled system because we have two constant powers coming in um we have to look at the control module and the wiring at this point so very simply i plugged in a light onto the control wire which is this blue red okay and it comes all the way down to the control module down here which is our drl control module so our drl control module is the one that takes and sends out a ground now it cannot send out a ground if the module itself is not grounded all right so the module needs to be grounded in order for it to get and um send out its own ground without a ground into the module you cannot have a ground that's going to be sent out inside of here so that right off the bat tells me that uh more than likely we are ground on this side is good but since we are having an issue with the lights turning on all the time even when the key is out and the lights are off um we have to try eliminate the module from the system so since with my test light plugged onto this wire we had the light illuminate the next easiest thing to do to eliminate the module from the equation is just simply take 
and unplug the module from the vehicle. Okay, if we take and we unplug the module from the vehicle and my light still illuminates, let's just draw this little guy. All right, my light still illuminates. Um, that means that there's going to end up being a short onto the uh, onto the wire itself. Now, the short on the wire could either be from body or an interwire short into the harness or even even another connector. All right, so we at this point it's just basically trying to find out exactly where that short is. So the easiest way for me to do this is just keep my light connected and just go along all the wiring harness pulling in and twisting it and trying to see if we can't get this light to go dim. Now in the video you will actually see uh, an area where the light actually starts to go and flash up on and off on and off just ever so slightly. All right. So uh, at that point on uh, I knew that I had found where my issue was and I just needed a confirmation from the client in order to continue because uh, the shop is good at doing the small repairs and that, but if they don't have time, they have me go and really pinpoint exactly where everything is so they don't waste any time trying to find it afterwards. All right. So, um, I found where it was and after moving, uh, uh, the wire around the light went out, which then showed that the issue was into the wiring. So we're going to continue with the video from here, and I hope you enjoyed the rest of the video. All right, so very quickly, I will put the wiring diagram up for everybody just so I could uh, show you guys what is going on. Um, basically, right now, all I have is the relays out, okay? I located the DRL module. All right, so both relays are out for both headlamps. Uh, the battery is connected because, but, because when I put one relay in, all right, the lights come on automatically and they should not, okay? Uh, they should only come on when commanded to come on by your switch, if you want, okay? So, uh, what I was thinking onto this one is because it's my DRL module, very simply, just grab my, uh, my breakout box for the DLC, all right? I came up, I found my wire, which is right there. The, it's that the red and blue wire, or blue and red, blue and red, sorry, all right? And I thought, okay, well, let's just plug it in and see what's going on, okay? As you can tell, my light lights up. My switch is in the off position right now, all right? So there's no reason for that to actually be on. So, uh, especially since the key's out of the vehicle, uh, the, sh the light should not come on whatsoever. So all I decided to do was just take and disconnect the module. Let's see if it's the module that's doing it. Because if it's the module, well, then we have a bigger issue. And module is now out, and as we can tell, we still have a uh, nice and bright light onto this. So um, from there, we have a short to ground somewhere in the wiring and I got to figure out where it is at this point. All right, so very simply, I'm gonna keep this guy connected and I'm gonna go wiggle some wires around and see if I can't get him to um, pretty much like go out. All right, so I'll bring you guys back if I find anything. Yeah, all right, so give you guys a view of this light. I don't know how well this is gonna catch on camera, but. I'm just gonna bring my pry bar into this area. All right, and I'm just gonna pry as I move my wiring. I don't know if you guys see the flicker of the light. All right. All right, I'm seeing it flicker. I don't know if you guys are. I hope you guys are, okay? So we'll take and we'll move the wiring. There it is, okay? Very, very clear flicker onto that, all right? I'm hoping you guys are seeing that. So there's a wire that is shorted out to its and uh, it seems to be down in this area. So uh, they gotta take and fix that, and then that should fix their issue. I don't know exactly where this wire goes. I don't know where it might be rubbing, but I can tell you at 100% it is rubbing. All right, so uh, that's it on that one. Um, if they want me to repair it, I'll repair it. Uh, they might do this themselves though, so the shop is, uh, they're good at the, the repairs, they just have some issues sometimes with some di with diagnosing the vehicles. So I come in by and I help them out real quick, but uh, very quick, uh, took me about 10 minutes to do this job guys. So, and the fact that there was a short to ground onto that wire, and that short to ground is causing my headlights to turn on, and that is causing my, um, my fuse to blow every now and then because I don't know where it might be shorted on the inside. There might actually be more wire damage in there. All right, so 
that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time. All right, so the client said he did not have time to do this, so he asked me if I could go ahead and locate exactly where the wire is. Um, so what we're going to do real quick is just remove the air box. All right, there's a few little bolts all, the, all around that have to be removed, like this guy, this guy, and probably one or two in the back. Uh, and then from there, we're going to take this... Uh, this clamp off to remove the intake hose. Um, whenever you are working on vehicles, especially older vehicles, always make sure that you're checking to make sure that there's not something already broken onto this one. So if we see here, someone actually took and super glued the hose back onto this area. So um, I took and I made sure that I uh, took a picture of it because if it breaks again, it's not on me. It was already broken to begin with and somebody just super glued it. All right, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this air box and I'll get back with, to everybody in a second. All right, everybody, I want you to take a good look at this. This is a brake line that was repair, replaced onto this vehicle. Look where they passed it. Okay, I don't know if you guys see all the charred marks right there. All right, but uh, this brake line is rubbing into the um, the wiring harness. So uh, let's go get my little pry bar. We'll move that out of the way. Oh, welcome to the Civic. That's the diagnostic Civic, I call it. My truck is out of commission right now. It has a blown axle seal in the back. I haven't had time to fix that. Uh, there we go. All right, so we see clearly see that right now, uh, this brake line is the cause of our issue. I'll give you guys a light if I can. All right, so I don't know if you guys see right here. All right, and it's smoking right now. So that means that there's something that is on that should not be. So we'll just remove power and ground, or ground at least, because, uh, yeah, uh, this guy might actually need a wiring harness, or this is going to take a long time to repair, all right? Um, so I'm just going to take a snapshot of, shot of that. I'll send it to the client, and I don't know what they're going to do with that, but uh, my job here is done. That is the cause. Uh, there's, good, like, a lot of wires that have got to be repaired. Uh, the brake line has to be moved out of the way. So, and that's not what I'm here for. I was here to just take and diagnose it. And it is diagnosed. So, hope you guys enjoyed this. And I will see you guys next time.